All right, and we are on to our headliner. So our headliner tonight is Mike Corbett. Mike is uh, the publisher of the ha Hamilton County Business Magazine, the Welcome to Hamilton County Community Guide, and various other glossy magazines and print marketing products. Mike has worked in the media his entire career as a TV news anchor and a PM Magazine co-host for the first 10 years. Then as a newspaper advertising executive and now a magazine publisher. His evolution from journalist to businessman while pursuing his MBA is a classic example of how people change their careers every 10 years or so to adjust to market conditions, family demands, and the aging process. For the next chapter, he's pursuing public office and running in May primary for mayor of Noblesville. Mike will explain how he got to this point and why we need more entrepreneurial types in public office. Could you help me give Mike Corbett a warm Sparks welcome? Thank you. And thank all of you for coming. Do we have any residents of Noblesville here tonight? Yes, we do. Thank you so much for coming down and, uh, and listening to what I have to say here. I'm going to talk a little bit about Noblesville, and I will have the opportunity to talk about my campaign a little bit. But actually, I'm going to, uh, in deference to Chris, cast the net a little bit wider. I'm going to cast a little bit bigger net on this. We're going to talk about suburban development and the way things have developed here in, in Hamilton County. Wait a minute. Where's my... There it is. The way things have developed uh, here in Hamilton County over the past uh, three or four generations or so. You know, when you look, about, when you look at um, the development in Hamilton County, because it's the way it's been while most of us have been alive, we kind of think that this is the normal way that things have developed. But really, suburban development could be considered a little bit of an experiment because for thousands of years, cities and towns really were developed on a sort of urban model. And that was what there, there was a town center and then uh, it was develop the development all happened sort of from the, on the outside. It grew uh, out from the center. Whereas about 50 or 60 years ago, as people got more mobile and the uh, automobile became much more dependable, development on the outskirts of town and far away from the town center became uh, much more of a reality. And so that's kind of how uh, suburban development has happened. And it's new enough that it could still be considered an experiment. That is the, uh, that's the suggestion of the guy who wrote this book. His name's Charles Marone, Jr., and I saw him in, India, in Indianapolis last fall. And I found uh, some of his thinking to be fascinating, and it, is, uh, it has impacted my thinking as I decided to run for mayor here in, uh, in, the, in the May primary. So Charles Marone is a civil engineer. He's from Brainerd, Minnesota. And as he was growing up, he was realizing that a lot of the development in Brainerd was moving out of the town center toward the outskirts of town. And so being an engineer, he, he wanted to look into it, find the reasons for it, uh, analyze it a little bit, and figure out what was going on. What he determined was that a lot of this, uh, the development that was happening on the outskirts of town was actually being subsidized by the federal and state governments. They were actually encouraging businesses to build on the outskirts of town, these big box stores and strip malls that really were impacted. The, uh, the, the center of the downtown of Brainerd. Well, about 50 or 60 years in, suddenly a lot of this development on the outskirts needs a lot of maintenance because it's, it's uh, highly uh, expensive to, to develop and to maintain. And the subsidies, although they were there when it was first being built, are not there for maintenance. And he makes the point, and I think it's a pretty good one, that suburban uh, developments all over the country are going to realize these maintenance uh, fees as they continue to grow. Now, what he does then is suggest that maybe we might want to reconsider a more traditional pattern of uh, city development. So let's talk a little bit about what we're looking at here. And this, uh, folks from uh, Noblesville will recognize this as Logan Street, and this is a, and a traditional urban style of development. You can tell each of the stores is about uh, two or three stories tall, uh, mixed use. There's generally retail on the first floor and maybe office and residential on the second and third floors. Uh, the sidewalks are wide, the, uh, the windows are tall, it's meant for browsing and uh, window shopping, and there's not a lot of parking, but the parking that's there is close to the, uh, close to the store. Now, you can, what, what, what? Uh, we would want to compare that to uh, this next photo, which looks like that, which, can you tell where that is? It's difficult, 
because it looks like every other suburban development, and that also is in Noblesville, but that's typical suburban development, which is single story. Uh, generally, there aren't a lot of windows in the fronts of the stores. Um, there aren't a lot of sidewalks, and there are these huge parking lots. Well, what distinguishes this, frankly, is that it's indistinguishable from many other suburban communities. It's sprawling, it's inefficient, it's expensive to build, expensive to maintain, and as Charles Marone would insist, it's also still experimental. Now, you can contrast that with traditional urban development, which is more identifiable. You can look at that street. It, it has a streetscape that's unique. It is downtown Noblesville. It's more affordable to build. It's promotable as a destination. And it's more sustainable because it doesn't cost quite as much to maintain. And so suburbs throughout the United States have got this challenge. As we move forward, what are we going to do? We've got to make a choice as to whether or not we want to build on the urban model or whether or not we want to use the suburban model. And you'll recognize that as being a discussion that's going on in a lot of Hamilton County communities right now, including Noblesville, Fishers Carmel, and Westfield specifically. It's not all or nothing. It's not like we have to do all of one or all of the other, but it's a matter of focus. Which one are we going to pay more attention to? All right, let's talk a little bit about Noblesville, my favorite city. We do have a vibrant downtown. We, uh, we are the county seat. We're lucky for that because the county brings a lot of people downtown. We are the city center, and traditionally, Noblesville has grown out from the city center, although we do have suburban development as well. However, for the past decade or so, we've had very little investment. We've been focusing on the suburban side, whereas I believe we need to uh, do a little bit better job of developing the downtown. We've had virtually no private investment in our downtown for the past decade. We do have a lot of land for expansion on the, on the edges of our community, and we're very fortunate to have a couple of really large uh, highways running through town, I-69, which runs on the eastern side of Noblesville, and then State Route 37, which kind of runs right through the middle. So let me share with you, if I may, just a little bit of my platform, because I think this goes back to this discussion about suburban development. First, we really need to start thinking about the future. We need to know what our community is going to look like in 50 or 60 years. We also have to recognize that any community that wants to grow has to attract young people, in this case, millennials. And more and more, millennials decide first where they want to live and then where they're going to work and they want to increasingly live, work, and play all in the same community. So we need good, diverse housing stock, we need a play, uh, great places for them to work, and we need great recreational opportunities so they can do all those in our community. Finally, we need to make sure that all of these things are connected, and not just by roads and streets, but by trails and sidewalks and possibly even mass transit, and we're looking into that now. Secondly, we need to respect the past, and I was talking about how downtown Noblesville is such a uh, an attractive uh, place for people to. When people come into Noblesville, they don't say, I really like what you've done with your Walmart. They really don't recognize the suburban development as something being unique to Noblesville. They say, I really like what you've done with your, down, with your town square, the way it's been preserved. It's very recognizable, and it is a walkable kind of community that's very attractive to people. Um, so we need to respect that. And as we, uh, as we, uh, continue to develop across the river, and, no, and downtown Noblesville is moving, so not the downtown isn't moving, but we're expanding across the river. We need to keep those urban principles in mind and make sure that as we develop, we develop things on that human scale. Third, we need to live within our means. This also goes back to this suburban development, and if in fact it is going to be that expensive to maintain down the road, we have to plan for that. Uh, for the first time in many years, Noblesville uh, passed a deficit budget this year. We're actually planning to spend more money than we intend to bring in. Uh, that doesn't, it's not devastating uh, right now because uh, we do have a savings account and uh, we can dip into it for one year, but it's also not sustainable. Uh, tax caps and new economic realities have kind of changed the environment that cities are, are operating in. We need to recognize that and, and plan for it. Finally, we need to think differently. Um, the current mayor has been in office now for 12 years, and when you've been in, a, in, a, in this position for, for 12 years, it's hard to come up with new ideas, especially when you consider that he's funded the campaigns of many of the city councilors, so many of those people think the same way he did. We need much more diversity of opinion on our city council and, frankly, in our mayor's office. We do not need uh, people all thinking the same way. And finally, elected public service should be temporary. It should not be a career for people. I really believe that we need 
citizen uh, uh, rulers that come in and, and uh, give the best, give their experience, do the best they can for maybe one or two terms, then move on and let some new ideas come into town. Now, if you think that you'd like to know more about anything that I've talked about here, I have a website, believe it or not. Uh, it's MikeCorbettForMayor.com. Uh, I invite you to go to it and learn more about what, uh, what's happening with our campaign. Uh, whether or not you live in Noblesville, I hope that you will uh, make sure that you <laughs> make sure that you vote. That's okay. It's, there's only one slide left anyway. Oh, there we go. Did I do something that made that happen? Um, this is the final slide anyway. Whether you live in Noblesville or not, <laughs> it's important. It's important that you get informed on the issues, and I encourage you to please do that. Please get out and vote. Again, the primary is May 5th. We've got lots, uh, a lot of candidates, like 25 candidates running uh, in Noblesville. We have, uh, 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 I think, seven. Uh, we're we're going, to, going to be coming a, a second-class city in 2016, and so we're expanding our city council. We've got seven people running at large, and just about every uh, district within our city is being contested. So it's wonderful. It's a wonderful time to get out and learn about the issues. Uh, vote May 5th, and uh, I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.